गुड डे लर्नर्स टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट प्रोडक्शन आइसोकॉन्ट्स आफ्टर कंप्लीशन ऑफ दिस कोर्स यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड मीनिंग्स ऑफ आइसोकॉन्ट्स डिफरेंट अजम्पन्स ऑफ आइसोकॉन्ट्स आइसोकॉन्ट्स एंड इन डिफरेंस कर्व वट आर द सिमिलैरिटीज एंड वट आर द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू आइसोकॉन्ट्स शेड्यूल एंड आइसोकॉन्ट कर्व डिफरेंट प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ आइसोकॉन्ट्स एंड usages of isoquant let's begin the lecture before understanding the concept of isoquants let's discuss the scenarios of short run and long run production see when it comes to production there are two cases either short run or long run short run is the time period where the producer is able to vary one single factor of production and long run is the time period where all the factors of production are variable now as you know there are four different factors of production land labor capital and entrepreneur now in short run the output will vary with the variation of one factor of production and the other factors of production are constant but in case of long run all these factors of production has the tendency of being variable that is there is no fixed factor in case of long run but there are both fixed as well as variable factors in case of short run isoquant is an example of or is used in your long run production function the term isoquant is made up of two words isos and quant isos is a greek word that means equal and quant stands for quantity that means equal quantity they are also known as isoproduct curves because they give the equal amount of product now if we go and look into the definition of isoquants it means combination of two different factors of production yielding the same amount of output that is an isoquant is drawn when we are able to vary two factors of production mostly labor and capital now this concept of isoquant might look similar to you it is to an extent similar to the indifference curve analysis that we have studied in the demand function now let's look into the details of how isoquant is dissimilar and similar to your indifference curve isoquant as we know is combination of two different factors of production yielding the same amount of output whereas indifference curve is combination of two different commodities yielding the same amount of satisfaction now see in isoquant we are talking about output and production so it is based on the production theory whereas indifference curve talks about satisfaction that the consumer derives in consumption of the commodities so it is associated with demand theory isoquants talks about combination of two factors of production that is the inputs that are required in production process whereas indifference curve deals with combination of two different commodities that the consumer is able to buy isoquants as a result give the amount of output that is produced by using these two factors of production whereas indifference curve as an output gives satisfaction that the consumer derives after consumption of the two commodities now since production is a physical state then the output in isoquant is measurable and you will see that the value of output is written in the isoquant but satisfaction is a mental state we can understand which commodity is giving us a higher satisfaction 
which commodity is giving us a lower satisfaction, but we are not able to measure it. So the measurement is missing in case of indifference curve. After understanding the differences between isoquant and indifference curve, let's move towards assumptions of isoquants. Now, there are different assumptions that we take into account while drawing an isoquant. The first assumption is utilization of two factors of production. An isoquant can be drawn by using only two factors of production. Mostly we take into account labor and capital. The second assumption is divisibility of factors. That is the factors that are taken for production uh, process are divisible to smaller units so that they can be utilized in a proportionate manner. The third assumption is consistency of production technique. By consistency of production technique, we mean that the production technique that is employed is supposed to remain same and it cannot change because if there is variation in the production technique, then that is going to impact the output. And the last one is optimal utilization of resources. The resources that are utilized in production must be used in their optimal capacity so that we can get the maximum benefit out of them. On the basis of these assumptions, let's come and discuss what are isoquant schedules. Isoquant schedule is a representation of different combinations of factors of production that is the same amount of output. It is presented in a tabular format. Now, if you look in this particular table, there are different combinations. Combinations A, B, C, D and E. Now, all these combinations are utilizing two factors of production, labor and capital in different ratios. But if you look, the output is same. So it is a tabular representation of the combinations. Now, after understanding isoquant schedule, let's move towards isoquant curve. Now, isoquant curve is a graphical representation of isoquant or isoproduct schedule. That is, we try and project the isoquant on a graphical manner. Now, if you look in this isoquant, there is a combination where 15 units of capital is employed and there is one unit of labor. In the next combination, the units are decreased to 10 of capital and labor is increased by one unit. The third combination is six units of capital and three units of labor. The fourth combination is three units of capital and four units of labor. And the fourth combination is one unit of capital and five units of labor. Now, if you look, this is combination A, this is combination B, this is combination C, this is combination D, and this is combination E. Now, any combination between A and B is also feasible and possible in case of isocons. That is, a producer can use any combination from 15 units of capital to one unit of capital in such a manner that the output is supposed to remain constant. Now, after understanding the isocont curve, let's move to the properties of isocons. The first property of isocont is they are negatively sloped. By negative slope, we mean that as the unit of one factor decreases, the unit of another factor increases. This is an example of a negative slope curve. Now, if you look, Initially, we have 15 units of capital and one unit of labor. As the labor increases by one, the capital decreases by five. That is, if capital is going down, the units of labor is increasing. That is, the slope is negative. The second property of isoquant is higher the isoquants, higher is the 
output. Now if you look, this is an isoquant. Let's assume it is giving us an output of 100. Now let's draw another isochron at the top of this isochron and assume the output that we are getting from it is 200 units. Now let's take or keep the unit of liver as 3 and it is constant in both the isochrons. Now this is one combination where we are using 6 units of capital and 3 units of liver and in other one we are utilizing 11 units of capital and 3 units of liver. Now if you look as we are moving upwards the number of units of capital is increasing and the labor is constant since the factor of production has increased that means the output is bound to increase. So as we go away from the origin that is higher the isocons the output is higher and the isocons that are nearer to the origin will have the lesser amount of output. So this isocon, let name it as A, will have the least amount of output, then B, then C, then D, and the highest amount of output is achieved via another, the isocon that is named as E. The next property is isocons are convex to origin. See, this is based on the concept of marginal rate of technical substitution. The details of this concept will be discussing in the next module. But for the sake of understanding right now, if you look, initially we have one unit of labor and 15 units of capital and then we have 10 units of labor and 2 units of capital. In the third combination, we have 6 units of labor and 3 units of capital. In the fourth combination, we have 4 units of labor and 3 units of capital. And in the last combination, we have 1 unit of capital and 5 units of labor. Now if you look, the change in your labor delta L is constant. It is one here, one here, one here and one here. But if you look to the change in capital, initially it is 5, that is delta K is 5. Change in capital here is 4 units. Here it is 3 units and here it is 2 units. So as we are moving from top to bottom, the change in capital is decreasing and that is your reason for the convex shape of isocons. This is known as diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution and it will be discussed in the next module. The next property of isocont is no two isocons can intersect each other. Now if you look, this is an isocont with an output of 100. Now let's assume we have another isocont. Let's say it has it is giving us B amount of out output and they are intersecting at assume point A. Now since isocont with 100 output is intersecting with isocont B at point A, that means output in both these isocons at this point is 100. But as we move downwards, we can see that the isocon B is higher and if we move towards the upper side, we can see that isocon B is lower than isocon with 100 output. That means that there are different levels of output in isocon B and that is not possible because Isocon depicts combination where two factors of production yield the same amount of output. Thus, two isocon cannot intersect each 
other. Now, after understanding the properties of isocons, let's move towards the importance of isocons in economics. Importance of isocons in economics? The first importance of isocons is they help in production analysis. By them, production analysis, but we mean that isocons are used in long run production analysis where two factors of production vary and two factors of production are used for providing the same amount of output. Second is they are used for understanding the input substitution. Now isocon deals with different combinations of two factors of production yielding the same amount of output. So it helps us in understanding how the producer can substitute one factor of production assumingly capital for another factor of production assumingly labor in such a manner that it doesn't affect the output. Third, it helps us in cost understanding the cost minimization. Now see, isocons along with iso cost line will, that we'll discuss later on helps us in identifying the least cost combination where the producer can produce the desired amount of output in the minimum cost. Another importance is it helps in analyzing the economies of scale. That is, it helps us in knowing how the producer can change analysis of economies of scale. Another importance of isocons is it helps in analysis of economies of scale. By this, what we mean that isocons helps us in understanding the concepts of returns to scale where we can change the factors of, uh, factors of production, labor and capital in a proportionate manner and we can see that how it is going to influence our total output. And lastly, it helps in production planning. By this, what we mean that on the basis of analysis that is done via isocons, we can understand how a producer can plan its process. That is, what is, what are the different combinations he can use for production processes and what combinations are not useful for him. That is, it gives an idea of economic region of planning. Secondly, it also helps us in identifying how the output can be increased by proportionate change in factors of production. Thirdly, it also helps in utilizing the concepts of cost of factors of production for identifying the places where the producer will get the desired amount of output in the minimum cost. This is all about isocons. Thank you.